What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and in this video we're going to check out what's new with Mac OS Sierra. So this release is known for two major reasons, the name change, so gone is OS X, and the next one is Siri integration. So Siri finally makes it to the Mac, and it has some unique features for the Mac experience, which we'll explore later in this video. Now Apple is still calling this version 10.12, otherwise known as Sierra, so they're continuing the version number here, they've just left out the OS X part of that. So getting back to what's visually different, of course we have new wallpaper and we have a new notification center. So we have a redesigned notification center, which is basically just lighter and more translucent than before and looks very similar to iOS 10, but otherwise it's pretty much functionally identical. One of the other major focuses with this release of Mac OS is storage management. So if we go to storage here and go to manage, you can see we have several options under recommendations, which includes store in iCloud. So if you're running out of space on your Mac, this will actually upload files for storage in iCloud. So you can free up some space. And then you also have optimized storage. So if you optimize storage, this will remove files you're not using, such as previously watched iTunes downloads or attachments. You can also elect to erase trash automatically so you don't build up files in your trash can that's taking up space. And then you can reduce clutter. So this allows you to review files that you may not need that you can delete. We also have another iCloud feature, which allows you to share your files located on your desktop and your documents folder across iCloud devices. So if we go to iCloud Drive, you can see we have a new section here called desktop and documents folders. So if you have this turned on, anything saved on your desktop or your documents folder will be shared via iCloud to other devices. So basically anytime you modify documents, they're basically synced across all those devices. This also works on iOS 10. So if you go to iCloud Drive, you'll see a desktop and documents folder that allows you to access these files on your mobile devices. The messaging app has also been updated with many of the features that come with iOS 10. So that includes some of the bubble effects. Right now, they're not fully functional here. So for example, we have the invisible effect uh, and it's partially, it works partially. So if you click on it, you can see that it reveals the text. Uh, we also see that we have some of those digital touch features which animate here within the line of the message. We have larger emojis. So if you just post emojis without text, you get these extra large emojis. And again, the emoji keyboard is right here. Uh, and of course we have rich links. So as you can see, when I tapped on that, that brings me right to that link, but I can also see a preview of that link without opening it up. And if the link is a video, you can actually play it back within the message thread, which is kind of nice. And if you tap on this, we can actually react to it. So this is called tap back and many of these features are also in iOS 10. So I can thumbs this up, heart it or whatever. So I'm just gonna go thumbs up, send it off and the sender receives it. Another new feature brings tabs to apps. So somewhat similar to tabs within iOS, you can actually tab apps. So for example, I'm in the pages app right now and if I go to new document, I can, open, I can go ahead and open up a blank document. I now have two tabs for each document instead of two different windows. Now this is a feature that's managed under settings. It may not be on by default in your case. So you'll have to go to the dock and then you'll see uh, the option to prefer tabs when opening documents. And this allows you to select always in full screen only or manually. So I select always, so it doesn't matter what state I'm in, they automatically open up into these tabs. And of course this works across different apps. So this will actually work in the Maps app or any other app that supports it. Next up we have picture and picture. And for videos that support it, you'll see this little icon right here in the player that allows you to pop out the video. This is somewhat similar to how it's done on iOS 9 and the iPad. Now this basically gives us a resizable video player so I can go ahead and resize it to small or large and you can see the limits to how you can scale those. Now it snaps to one of the four corners here so I can't just move it to wherever I want it to but it continues playing the video over whatever I'm doing. So if I want to go ahead and read my email the video stays on top of it so it's not obscured which is kind of nice. And of course I get my media controls right here and if I want to snap it back to the website it takes me right back to it. Another new feature with Mac OS is a universal clipboard which actually works with iOS 10. So I can go ahead and copy items on Mac OS and it's available to me on the clipboard of my nearby iOS device and vice versa. So it's one way of sort of syncing your clipboards together. So if you wanna copy from one device to another, this makes it much simpler and it actually works extremely well. The Photos app also gets an update somewhat similar to the Photos app for iOS 10, which includes this memory section. So this sort of smartly aggregates your photos into these albums, which is grouped together by location or uh, uh, specific times of the year and automatically generates these albums. So I can open them up 
And when I open them up, I can see all the furloughs contained in them. So you can see in this case, it's just furloughs from last year this time. And it plays back this little video toward the top. So it kind of gives you this little uh, slideshow, which is kind of nice. We also get a people category. So this will actually search for all the photos with people's faces in them and separate them out for you. So right now it's still sorting these photos out. So obviously it identified me and I can drag and drop them to my favorites area so they appear toward the top. Now for me, one of the most exciting new features with the photos app is that you can actually search for category. So for example, if I search for dog, this will actually search for images with dogs in them, not just uh, file names with dog in it or locations with dog in it. It actually searches the photographs for images of dogs and it actually works extremely well. iTunes has also been updated. If you go to the music section, you'll see that the layout is somewhat similar to the new music app in iOS 10. So you have for you with these bolder fonts up top. You can see you recently played prioritized toward the top as well as some playlists below. Now we have a new browse section. This allows you to discover music within Apple service. So you can see top songs, top albums, top music videos, etc. We also have radio, so you can see your radio stations. We even have Beats 1, which gets its own tab. And then we have our available stations. We also have our iTunes Store. The iTunes Store has a similar new layout to the music app within iOS 10. The Note app, like iOS 10, also picks up collaboration. So you'll see this little icon in the upper corner here that allows you to invite people to contribute to this document. So that basically they get an iCloud link, which allows them to open up the Notes app on their end and modify this document and I can see those changes. So basically this allows you to share it via one of the services available to you. The Mail app also allows you to sort by unopened or open messages. Now moving on to Siri, there are a number of ways you can invoke it. We have a little icon in the menu bar up top here. So if you want to quickly access it, you can do so right here, right next to the spotlight search. Of course, we also have this icon in the dock, which you can remove if you don't want it, but basically brings up the same interface. Now you also have a new settings panel with Siri as well. So if you go to Siri, you can see if you don't want it, you can just turn it off. You can change the language. Uh, we also have different voices you can pick from and you can also turn off voice feedback. So if you don't want it to talk back to you, you can turn that off. You can also change the mic input. So if you have several different sources, you can select them. And then we also have a keyboard shortcut you can add. It's off by default, but it also offers the option to do function space to bring it up or you can customize a command just by entering the keys you may want. And if you don't want this to appear in the menu bar, you can also toggle this as well. Now getting back to how this works, it's very similar to using it on an iOS device. What's the weather like tomorrow? Nice weather coming up tomorrow, up to 79 degrees. Set an appointment tomorrow at 8 p.m. to complete this review. Okay, I can create your meeting. Note that you already have an appointment about complete this review at 8 p.m. Shall I schedule it anyway? Cancel. All right, Michael, I'll leave it off your calendar. Tell my sister I'll stop by tomorrow around 4 o'clock. Okay, go ahead. Cancel. Okay, I won't send it. Show me my dentist appointment. I found one appointment. Open Safari. Open YouTube.com. Create a new note. Okay, I can take that note for you. Just tell me what you wanted to say. Turn off Bluetooth. Okay, I turned off Bluetooth. And if I want to turn it back on, I have a little toggle here that allows me to turn it back on. Play the top 40 songs. So obviously this opens up the iTunes app and begins playing songs. And of course you can command it to play specific songs, albums, or artists. The other great thing with Siri on the Mac is that you can search for specific files. Show me all my PDFs. Here are all of the PDFs. Show me my PDFs in iCloud. I found these PDFs in your iCloud drive. The other great thing with Siri is that you can pin searches to your notification center. Show me tweets from Detroit Borg. Searching on Twitter. Okay, here are some tweets. So there you go. You can see my Twitter feed uh, from Twitter. And there's a little plus icon in the upper right corner, which allows me to add this to my notification center. So now I have a widget specifically for this search, which is kind of nice. So I can see my feed right here. And I can go ahead and remove this if I don't want it. The other great thing is you can drag and drop items from your Siri search. Show me pictures of a Yorkie. 
So there we go, we get some images of a Yorkie and I can just go ahead and drag and drop those images to whatever document I'm working on. And of course, if you just wanna jump right to Safari to get the full results, you can do so by clicking on the link. Another new feature with Mac OS is Auto Unlock. So this works with the Apple Watch. So if you have an Apple Watch on and you're within three meters of your Mac, this will automatically log you in so you don't have to enter in your password. Apple Pay is also making it to the Mac via the web. So for websites that support Apple Pay, you can actually authenticate uh, using your Apple Watch or your iPhone using Touch ID. So if those things are close to your Mac, you can actually use those to authenticate payment on a website within a browser on your Mac. There are many other smaller feature improvements, including the ability to sort files while keeping folders at the top, which can be found under Finder Preferences. Another iOS feature making its debut on the Mac is double space to add a period, which is a feature you can turn off under keyboard settings. And lastly, we have dwell control, which is a new accessibility feature that allows users with limited mobility to use headsets or eye tracking technology to interact with their Mac. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this early look at Mac OS Sierra. I'm definitely excited to see Siri on the Mac and I find myself using it already quite frequently. But what do you guys think? What is your favorite new feature? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.